Hello, my name is Dr. Mark Harris at the University of Edinburgh. I'm an experimental physicist, a neutron scatterer to be precise, with interests in the fundamental physics of magnetism. But I'm also fascinated by foundational questions of science and the nature of reality, and in how philosophy and theology might help us to understand those questions better. This MOOC is part of a wider project which has produced three MOOCs in total and an online MSc, all in philosophy, science and religion. And all of these programmes have been put together by a collaboration between academics working in philosophy in Edinburgh and in the School of Divinity, my own base. The other MOOCs have looked at philosophy and science, philosophy and religion, while this one looks at science and religion, the third well-established mode of discourse that's included within philosophy, science and religion. And of course the science and religion discourse is so significant that it's hardly possible to live in the Western world and not hold an opinion on it. The discourse is, however, almost universally construed in terms of a debate, and a debate that's characterised by conflict above all. The fact that the debate underlies some highly volatile social and political disagreements adds fuel to the fire and these disagreements are especially live in parts of the world like North America concerning issues like climate change, the place of evolution versus creation in high school education and in bioethics concerning pro-life versus pro-choice. Arguably in these areas there's too much heat and too little light. At present, it's possible to see the science and religion debate as a near perfect example of C.P. Snow's famous two cultures idea, that there's an intellectual gulf between the natural sciences and the humanities subjects that's so deep that meaningful dialogue is almost impossible. We're all too familiar with the many inexpert and overconfident commentators on both sides of the science and religion debate who weigh in a bit too blithely, really, with the effect that all too often the misunderstanding and hostility are entrenched due to a poor grasp of the issues at stake. The new atheism debate, for instance, or the creation versus evolution debate are both good examples of areas that have been dominated really too often by clashes of ideology rather than productive exchange of ideas. And as a result, the conflict hypothesis, this is the idea that science and religion are irreconcilably at war with each other, looks set to be perpetuated indefinitely. And yet, the academic discipline of science and religion, which brings together thousands of scientists, philosophers, historians and theologians, among other kinds of scholar, has demonstrated again and again the superficiality of the view that science and religion have to be completely at loggerheads. Why then is the conflict hypothesis so pervasive? Well, partly it's because the conflict story sells in the popular media, and partly it's because it suits the agendas of the vocal few on the extremes. But more importantly though, I think, it's because the conflict hypothesis is a social construct. It's an idea that seems so obvious that a society will largely believe it without question, because that idea supports or legitimates a widespread assumption of that society. In this case, that assumption is what's known as the secularization thesis, the idea that traditionally religious beliefs and practices must inevitably decline in the face of modern skepticism and relativism, with a special emphasis on the superiority of modern science and technology for providing essential knowledge and truths. Well, it's not our purpose to investigate the rights and wrongs of the secularization thesis in this MOOC, nor the ways in which it entwines with ideologies and practices that are at the heart of Western culture, including forms of governance and social welfare. All of these are hotly disputed by academics in the social sciences, not to mention public figures like politicians and journalists and religious leaders. What we want to do instead is to point to the way to a new kind of intellectual enlightenment where the gulf between the two cultures is being bridged. And I'm speaking of the academic field of science and religion. And this field is huge and the scope is huge. The MOOC we have here can do little more than simply touch upon some of the key topics. 
Questions of ultimate meaning and purpose have long been at the heart of the science and religion debate. But as the sessions we put together show, there's much more at stake in the debate between science and religion than simply where do we come from, where are we going, what does it all mean? We've invited experts from a number of universities around the world to give their perspectives on topics such as science, religion, and the origins of the universe, Buddhism and science, evolution, questions surrounding design, purpose, and the problem of evil, as well as questions about the status of humans in the natural order. Are we unique, for instance, is a question that is often asked in theological and philosophical circles. And what are the implications of even asking such a question, let alone answering it? Well, I hope that you enjoy the course and find material that's stimulating here. Even if you may not agree with everything, we wouldn't expect you to. After all, it's in the science and religion debate that many of our deepest questions are to be found. The answers may be elusive, but we simply can't help asking these questions.